This is Drosera prolifera, and it's been a very easy sundew in my experience. It's close related to Drosera adelae, a very common sundew in cultivation that you can see in this clump here. But Drosera prolifera is a tropical sundew from Queensland. It is capable of getting much larger than the plant you see here. Uh, this plant is about two inches from leaf to leaf across the plant, but I've actually seen a specimen that had a leaf well over an inch across. So uh, if you don't neglect your plants like I have for the past two years, uh, you can usually get plants that are pretty large. And this plant usually has a tendency to grow very rapidly in the summer months. Since it is a tropical plant, uh, it really does thrive in warmer conditions. During the summer, it usually keeps about 10 or more leaves in an active state at a time. Uh, but during the winter, when the temperatures cool down, uh, at, which is this time of year for me, um, the plant usually only keeps about five leaves or, or so open at a given time. But I really do like how the leaves color up in this nice red coloration during the winter, since in the summer, the growth is usually more of a whitish yellow or green. But um, I really do like how it looks in the winter. In the summer, when it's in its active state, and f it has a tendency to flower even without feeding, and these flowers are kind of interesting. They actually act as stolons, and they produce plantlets if the proper humidity and temperature are experienced by the plant. But um, very interestingly, these plantlets will sort of either form on the stalk itself, or the flowers will convert into a plantlet. So, very interesting means of propagating itself, especially in the wild. If um, this, this stalk you see here is about 8 inches long, so that would be a pretty effective means of spreading itself since the, uh, the flowers are evidently infertile. And uh, very, this plant is pretty capable of extracting nutrients from the media, and I haven't fed this plantlet at all, well this plant now, it's, it's uh, sized up pretty nicely, but just about a year ago this was just this size. And, I, as I said, I didn't feed it, and it really is good at extracting nutrients from the soil and maintaining that baseline uh, size that I mentioned earlier. But, um, very, it seems to be thriving in the media I'm giving it right now in sort of a live sphagnum, uh, dead sphagnum combination with a little bit of peat moss and sand mixed in. And they really seem to thrive in this, uh, especially with the live sphagnum, I think, is one of the factors that really helps them grow nicely. But um, it's been growing in a pretty tall pot. I've seen good success from other growers with um, shorter pots, but this pot is about six inches tall or more. And uh, I just have it here mixed in with some cephalotis and Drosera adelae. Uh, and it it's really seems to like the, um, the conditions down here. So uh, I hope this helps you understand a bit more about this plant. And that was Drosera prolifera.